from me and from Dougal as well, and welcome to the second week uh, of term uh, here at Russell. Um, now, obviously, in the assembly this morning, as you can see, I tried to do an impression of Andrea Bocelli, and I failed miserably, but we had fun trying. Uh, one of the other things that we've been doing an awful lot of at the moment is keeping the grounds of this wonderful school in this beautiful environment as well as we possibly can. And uh, that's something which I've certainly really enjoyed doing because it makes me feel very much connected to this wonderful place. Um, and I'm sure that you're all finding things to do uh, during these weeks of lockdown. However, as hospital admissions within the UK begin to decrease, uh, there is perhaps signs of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but of course, we think of all of those families at the moment who have lost loved ones or um, who are obviously worried about the health of elderly and vulnerable people. And uh, as we have with every week up to this point, we give thanks as well for the outstanding work of the NHS, our doctors and our nurses, and of course, all of those healthcare professionals around the world who are working so hard to ensure that we all keep safe. Now, you're going to hear very little more from me this morning because we have a real treat coming up at the end of assembly, which will be Mary Moorcross uh, singing Ave Maria. We're going to hear also from Mrs. Becker. We're going to hear from Mr. Press. who will talk a little bit about study leave for our year 11 and our year 13 students. And also we'll be hearing from Ms. Porovich, who will be um, acknowledging the outstanding work uh, of so many of you during the last week in terms of your online learning. And as always, uh, I am absolutely in awe of the uh, commitment uh, and the focus and the good humour with which you have approached a very different style of learning. So have a fantastic week. Uh, our thoughts and our love are with you wherever you are in the world and we look forward to seeing you again soon in person. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening depending on where you are in the world today. You will have seen that we are spending much more time outdoors these days. The air here at Russell is fresh, everything is in bloom, the sun is shining. We miss the school being filled with all of you, uh, getting on with your day, going from lesson to lesson, enjoying a lunchtime pause on the benches, playing sport out in the sun, working hard in your lessons, taking part in all of the various activities, be that CCF, choir, board games, or even Warhammer. We have had some super contributions to our Russell Performs classroom this week. The highlight for me was Alice Hogarth's stunning photograph entitled Glass, uh, and Anastasia Yesenia's photographs of incredible skies at dusk here on the Fylde Coast. Grace Lewis's incredibly realistic drawing of a padlock deserves honourable mention too. I've got to say that from my perspective, I found it really difficult to judge which one was the photograph and which one was her drawing. Remote learning continues apace, and this week sees the first of our remote testing weeks. Your teachers have needed to become super adept at using Google in order to be able to do this, uh, and when you're not working hard on answering your questions well, you can marvel in the technology involved to make this possible. Our excellent remote learnings for this week, uh, we had a huge selection to choose from, and here are the people we decided on. So, in Year 7, it's Charlie Walker-Reed for his work in maths. In Year 8, it's Aaliyah Murray in history. In year 9, it's Seng Yong Jung and Javier Marti in DT for the most amazing work on perspective drawing. In Year 10, it's Suki. In Year 11, we've got Isabella Wright and Peter Dissel for maths. In year 12, we have Joe Warwick and in year 13, Kate Jenkinson, both for wonderful work and continued progress in history. Well done to all of you for all of the hard work uh, this last week. All that remains for me to say is that year, for year 10 and year 12, good luck with your upcoming in-class tests. Work hard and I'm sure you'll do well. Year 11 and 13, I hope your study leave is productive. Look out for an email from me about the protocols for uh, the Russell Diploma and how that's going to be run. And make sure that you watch uh, the video blog that Mr. Prest and I created last week, which will give you further information about how the grades that we submit to the exam boards will be calculated. I wish everyone a wonderful and productive week. Well, hello, and uh, I'm delighted to announce that the Headmasters Awards this week uh, go to Yvonne Zhu in Year 11, and she has been nominated by Mr McNabb, who is really delighted by the quality of work that she's producing, but also the uh, conscientious uh, approach that she's taking 
uh, in terms of her preparation for the Russell Diploma. So well done to you, Yvonne. And our second award this week uh, goes to Oscar Mystery uh, in Year 9. And he has been nominated by Mr Clark uh, on account of his very high level of engagement uh, during, the, during his history lessons, uh, where he makes frequent contributions and also the effort um, that, that he has put into producing some really outstanding work. So Oscar and Yvonne, uh, congratulations, well done. Hello, so I'm talking to you today from the Sixth Form Centre and I wanted to talk to our Year 11 and our Upper Six students about study leave. Obviously you went on to study leave on Friday and I thought it was just useful to give you some ideas and some pointers about how to really get the best out of your study leave. Now obviously this year your study leave is in anticipation of your Russell Diploma exams uh, rather than your public examinations and it's really really important that you put absolutely everything you can into these examinations. For all of you in year 11 and in the upper sixth, this is the culmination of two years of really hard work. And it's important that you show the very, very best of yourself in these examinations. For our year 11 students, this is also going to provide really useful, important information when we look at your subject combinations for sixth form, whether that's for A-levels or for the IB. For our upper six students, Again, this is a really, really important piece of evidence and information that I, as your head of sixth, am going to use when I talk to universities, because as you'll have seen on the last um, video blog that I did with Ms. Porovich, I'm going to be writing to all of your universities about you, talking about how fantastic you are and our reservations about the system that's being used by Ofqual and the exam boards for your A-levels and for the IB. So, really important that you revise as hard as you possibly can for these examinations. But what else can you do to make sure that you get the best out of your study leave? So, first thing is that you need to make sure that your day is structured. It's very, very easy. I've experienced this when I did examinations. I'm sure lots of your parents and your teachers did as well. It's really, really easy to get into bad habits. So it's very important that you have a very clear structure to your day. That's something that you've benefited from, obviously, in recent weeks with remote learning at home that lots of other students at maybe other schools and colleges haven't been able to. That needs to continue. And actually, the school day is a really good routine to stick to. So you've got clearly defined periods of time that you're doing particular um, things in, revising for a particular subject. So not only do you need a routine and a structure in your day, but you need, a, you need a structure to your revision. So you need to have a really clear idea of where you want to go and what you want to achieve with your revision and what you're going to do at different points in the day, but also at different points over the next three or four weeks. Now, I've spoken to the upper six before about um, the work of a, a man called Daniel T. Willingham, uh, who is a professor of cognitive psychology at, um, I think, Virginia or Virginia Tech University. Really, really interesting guy who's written a lot about education and about how we can apply some neuropsychology um, and neuroscience to um, the education. And one of his key principles um, is something that's always stuck with me. And he said that memory is the residue of thought. We remember, and we remember well, those things that we think about a lot. And this is a really good principle to apply to your revision. Because what he's saying is that when, if you want to remember something, if you want to understand something in depth, um, at a, at a deep level rather than superficially, then you really need to engage with that material. And that means that when you're revising, it's not simply enough to read over your notes. You need to force yourself to think about this material. So that means you need to do things with that material. So you might want to um, rank some, some, some kind of concepts or material in order of importance. You might want to plan essays. You might want to um, do exercises, maybe in maths or, or, or physics. 
Because when you have to apply knowledge, you think about it in more depth and more detail, and you're going to come to a greater understanding of it. Because you think about it more, you're going to remember it. And therefore, in your examinations, you're going to be able to retrieve that from your long term memory and not be sitting there in the exam unable to remember anything. And um, you also need to cycle your revision. So over the next three or four weeks, you should be cycling your revision so that you are looking at concepts and particular topics multiple times, maybe three or four, five even times, so that you don't just look at a particular unit or topic once, you're coming back to it over and over again. So maybe you don't spend as long on it, don't spend two days on, on, on one topic, you might spend a few hours, and then a few hours a week later, and a few hours a week later um, uh, again after that. So you keep coming back to this material. That means it's more likely to stick in your long-term memory, and that when it comes to your exam, you're gonna be able to retrieve that from your long-term memory, um, and you're gonna have uh, remembered and understood it. The other thing that you need to be doing is you need to be testing yourself, and you need to be testing yourself objectively. You shouldn't just be saying to yourself, can I remember that if you've just um, if you've just spent time revising it? Because of course you're going to be able to. What you should be doing is objectively testing yourself using past paper questions, assessments that your teachers have given you. Maybe you're going to plan an essay without looking at your material and see how much you can remember. Any kind of objective test or assessment of that material is going to help you not only practice retrieving it, but also it's gonna, it's gonna be a, a sort of assessment uh, that you can take of yourself. And if there's particular parts that you haven't remembered or that you, you, can't, you haven't understood in detail, you then know that you need to come back to that. So you need to force, your, force yourself to think about the material because memory okay, is the residue of thought. You need to be cycling your revision and keep coming back to topics and you need to be testing yourself objectively. If you can use these three sort of guiding principles during your revision, then you'll be in a really good position come the exam. A couple of other important things to remember is that, of course, you should keep checking in with your tutors at least once a week. They should all have given you um, a, an appointment time. I know you've all got that. Make sure you're sticking to that, so you're checking in, letting us know how you're getting on. We want to know that everything is okay. And again, that provides a good bit of structure for you. And of course, if you, you should remember that your teachers are still available to you. So if there's anything you've not understood, if you've tested yourself objectively and you've struggled and you realize you really don't understand a particular concept as well as you'd like, drop your teacher an email, see if they can help you. Maybe they'll arrange a conversation uh, over Zoom or, or, or Google Meet. Um, and your teachers are going to be available often during your lesson slots at, uh, that, that would have been. So again, check in with them uh, and get the benefit of, of all their expertise and, and their subject knowledge. So uh, um, use your study leave well, revise as hard as you possibly can, keep to a structure, remember those guiding principles that I've talked about. And if you are struggling or you need any extra help, you want some work looked at, marked, just get in touch with your teachers. Very best of luck, guys. And I know you'll do fantastically well in these exams. And we look forward to seeing how well you've done and then obviously celebrating that success in the summer. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the summer term. Obviously, it's not a summer term that we thought it was going to be, but we have to try and make the most of this unusual situation. At the moment, your teachers are working extremely hard so that they can deliver your curriculum content remotely and I have to say that you're doing an amazing job the way that you're all engaging with learning online but as you get used to learning online you might start to notice that you're missing your friends you're missing your sporting activities and just generally the social scene that comes with school more and more so I wanted to share a few tips with you that might help you stay well during this situation both emotionally and mentally now, of course, I've never experienced anything like this before in my lifetime, so I'm definitely not an expert. But if something that we share this afternoon helps just one person, then it'll be worth it. In the United Kingdom, the government have recognised the importance of daily exercise, so you might be finding yourself doing a lot more walking, cycling, 
or maybe some running. But if you're starting to get bored, then there are some things online to work towards. The Conqueror Virtual Fitness Challenges, for example, have been set up to help keep you motivated. There's lots of different routes or trails that you can sign up for. And every day when you go out and you walk or you cycle, those miles or those kilometers add towards the final goal. Now, of course, exercise isn't just good for your physical health. It also helps to support us emotionally and it's good for our social well-being. Now, I'm sure at this point, most people are starting to miss their usual football training or their dance classes, but there are some online alternatives available which might be a good substitute for the time being. Some examples, if you're into football, Tom Owens UK offer some weekly Instagram live sessions and they upload regular classes to their uh, YouTube channel. The Pro Football Academy run daily challenges on their YouTube channel and the Royal Academy of Dance run weekly online classes through their website. Now, of course, these are just a selection, but as the whole world is facing quarantine, there are lots of online options for almost all sports. And of course, it doesn't, it's not the same as being in the class with those people, but it might give you something to help take your mind off being in lockdown. One really important thing that I would encourage everybody to do is to practice self-care. Now, self-care it is very simple in terms of eating well, sleeping well and staying hydrated. But I think it's also really important to recognise when you're not feeling yourself. Something simple, like taking a break from the news, can be really helpful for your emotional well-being. Be kind to yourself. You're not in an ideal situation. You don't have the resources available to you at home that you would do at school. You're missing your friends. You're stuck inside. It's not perfect, but you have to be kind to yourself and recognise that you're doing your best. And so are your family. You know, your parents are, are no doubt not fluent in French. They might not have studied trigonometry since they were at school. Science might not be their best subject, but everybody is trying their best. Your teachers are learning new things every day. And probably with the exception of Mr. Clark, the rest of us are not technological geniuses. So we're really trying to deliver our lessons the best way that we can using online resources. At this point in time, it's easy to get frustrated with the little things, but it's really important to be kind and to recognise that everybody is doing their best. It's important to recognise and it's okay if you're not feeling okay. But please talk to somebody about how you're feeling. Some of the options might be your tutor. Every week you check in with your tutor. And believe it or not, those tutor sessions are not there to check up on you that you're doing the work, but to make sure that you're okay. The big good opportunity to have a chat if you're not feeling yourself. Your parents, they're there to help you. They love you and they care about you. There are also a couple of places online, Mind and Samaritans, that have lots of useful advice on self-isolating and looking after your mental health during this lockdown time. So most people in these situations will find themselves either thriving or surviving. You might be thriving at the moment, absolutely loving learning online. You might have taught yourself a new hobby, have time to do things that you wouldn't usually have time to do. Or, like my family, you might be surviving and just surviving most days. You may be aware that I have three boys aged between five and 11. Usually we're running around football training four or five times a week. So for all those families who at the end of the week feel like they've just about survived, we hope you find this peek into the Stecker Family Circus of Birmingham. Okay. 
Mum, this video won't load again. The internet still isn't working. What's five plus five? <laughs> Why could I do this at Mrs. Green's house? <laughs> so please join this time however we manage to get through it we'll get through it remember this will pass a prayer for the day let us pray the world is full of conflict on an individual and global level. We pray that Christ's peace will bring not only the absence of conflict, but also positive action. We pray for those who live in places where war destroys and takes societies backwards. May they experience the end of conflict and the possibility of renewal and positive change. We pray for families who fight among themselves or who cannot support one another. May they find the love that binds them together. We pray for those who cannot find peace within themselves. May they turn to God and find the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding. We pray for the divided Christian church. May it renew its striving for peace and reconciliation and provide an example of God's peaceful kingdom to the world. God, whose peace is all-encompassing, and calls us to action. Permeate the church and the world with your peace and inspire us to take the action to bring your kingdom to dark places. Amen. In the days after Jesus had risen from the dead, the Bible tells us that Jesus went and visited many of his followers. To say they were surprised to see him alive is to state the obvious. Some of the disciples even go to the extent of wanting to see the marks on his body caused by the hammer and nails. And then Jesus said to a group of them, Peace be with you. That word peace which Jesus uses is not the word we usually associate with have a nice day or have a nice time, hope all goes well have a lovely experience. Rather, for Jesus, this kind of peace he was talking about was the kind only God can give. It's the kind of peace which cuts through and makes a difference. It's incisive. It's the kind of peace which is courageous. A peace which makes a difference to people's lives and situations. Wherever we find ourselves at the moment, with whatever we have to do, let's bring to that situation Jesus' peace which makes a difference. A holy peace which conquers even death. That peace which helps to make sense of the impossible, of the hopeless, of those difficult situations. That peace which brings hope where there's only despair. Jesus said to his disciples, my peace I give to you. And then he said to them, go out into the world. Make a difference today.